All right. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I got a special guest on today named Ignacio Esteban. I know you guys have probably seen multiple podcasts with him on my show that I've done before. Oh, he's yeah. full of stories. He's got all kinds of different books that he's written in the past. So he's just he's, he's full of knowledge. So it's always good to bring him back on and talk about different topics. And he's done quite a bit of work. And you can find all of his books on Amazon. And this new book will be in the video description. So you can check it out. But in today's video in particular, we're going to be talking about the murder of Tupac, the murder of Biggie, how the Bloods and Crips were involved with that, and the speculation of Suge Knight and Puff Daddy being involved with this stuff. But Ignacio, kind of give a what drew you to get involved with this book and like the interest of who killed Tupac? I know. Hey, man, thanks for having me back on, man. I, I really enjoy it. I think it was, this is number seven or eight show oh, we've done together. We've, we've done a lot and a lot of little shorts, too. I still love the one you did with my backstory being on Undercover. Oh, yeah, that, that was a good one. I, I love making those shorts, man. They're always so fun. And then, you know, they get a good reaction and it's like a little movie or a little documentary kind of thing, you know? I know. Last time I checked, it was over 10,000 views. So people oh. check it out, man. Go out there. It does good work. And congratulations with your, some of your big numbers you have. Oh, I, yeah, I know you have you. another podcast. You're doing well with that, too, man. So awesome. Well, uh, I, do, oh, I, do, I do the rounds out there and I do a weekly show myself. Uh, people who don't know with uh, William Steele, we do a weekly current events, politics, true crime. And I've uh, been writing a lot of stuff, too. So I, I'm beginning to really enjoy this stuff, no doubt. So Tupac, I, I think like everybody else, man, I just never thought this murder ever be solved, right? 1997. Oh. I'm going to give a little background um, on what happened on, on, on that day. And then we're going to go with what's going on today here. So <clears throat> those who don't know, Tupac was shot on uh, September 7th, uh, 1996 in, uh, in Las Vegas, off the strip there near, I think, Flamingo. And the main strip there off uh, of Vegas, and uh, Tupac, of course, a famous rapper, hip hop artist, right? He's been around for uh, he's doing very well. He was with Death Row Records with Suge Knight with his label. <clears throat> he had some beefs and issues, but he wasn't really a gangster, right? He, he was a guy. He went to some some decent schools, uh, very artistic schools. He had he was a good actor also. He was involved in movies in in the nineties, and he was a talented art, and he was very passionate about his work. So. They were going to watch Mike Tyson. These guys were big fans. So you, you have uh, Tupac, who's involved with uh, Suge Knight, who's associated. And this is the problem. You want Remember what, what this is also, these rappers, hip-hop artists, they want those street creds, right? They're hardcore. So when you associate yourself with them with Mob Pyru Bloods, right? They were the Mob Pyrus. You got to be careful because the rivals are a lot of crips sometimes, right? So and sometimes their wars might bring you into their battles. Remember that? Right. This is what happens here. This is what happens here. So, and, and I watched the videos and, and I'm a guy that watched the videos and you can watch all this, how it happens. So you, you just go, go and, and look at the video of the MGM grand that night of the fight, Mike Tyson gives a whooping real quick. I, I think he knocks him out early in the early rounds and he wins the fight, like typical Mike Tyson fashion, right? right. And those yeah. who don't know Mike Tyson, Iron Mike, he, he was, he was known for knocking guys out early first, second, third rounds. That's it. He didn't go far too many times. <laughs> so he's he getting ready for another. He's getting ready for another fight too. I don't know if you've seen that. I did. I did. I, I still don't know the rules though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna deviate just for a second from the Tupac thing. I still don't know the rules of the fight because the guy's almost sixty years old, right. and Jake yeah. Paul is like in his mid twenties. Guy's a beast, and I and I've seen Tyson, six year old man, fighting a guy in his prime. I know Tyson at his prime was good, but remember at the end Tyson lost a lot of fights. People mm -hmm. forget at the end of his career. He, and I don't forget Buster Douglas, the controversy of Buster Douglas. I love sports, so I can talk a little bit about this here too. Uh, you know, then he, he lost some guys who were scrubs, right? He had issues. Is, is he getting himself back in shape? But can a 60-year-old man, he's 58, can compete with him? I hope there's some rules in there. I hope there's headgear involved. I hope there doesn't <laughs> – I don't want to see him get hurt because he can get really oh, hurt. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you get older and you're at that age and stuff. But, I mean, he's, you can see he's still hitting the gym hard training and just – that's a beast still, but you're right. When beast, you're older, but, you get fragile. Jake, Jake Paul is a beast too. Yeah, he's about yeah. my age though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, he, there's a whole difference. That the age. He, he's your age and he's been training he, and, and your body recovers and it's a different thing. I just hope there's True. rules in place. I hope it's a big success, but there's rules in place that can protect the athlete, especially Tyson of his age, because it, it could be dangerous. That's, right. that's all I'm saying. Boxing is no joke. That's for sure. People die in the ring a lot. And it's no joke. So I hope they have the head gear. So Tyson, we'll regress there, but back in September 7th, 96, Tyson whoops ass. You see Tupac come out and you see the videos and he is pumped. I mean, this guy is pumped up. 
He's, mm-hmm. he's jacked up. He's like jumping and screaming and everything else. And, and then you see it pan over. And I guess uh, <clears throat> Trevane Lane, who's a mob pyro with his crew, tells him, hey, listen, dude, that's Orlando Anderson, baby Lane. <clears throat> this guy's jumped us at Lakewood Mall a few months earlier, and they stole our uh, Death Row Records medallion. I guess Suge had given out some nice medallions to the guys, and they, and they get ripped off. He said, that guy? Yeah, there he is right there. So, you know, Death Row Record guides, him, Suge Knight, these guys, they go up on Orlando, and they approach him. It gets ugly, and you see the video. They give him a stomping, right? They beat him down, whoop his ass, right? <clears throat> and off they went. Boom, they disappear. And you see the video. So I guess allegedly, according to it, and you hear the, the recordings later in the, in the interviews with uh, Kiffy D, or uh, Orlando uh, uh, Dwayne Davis, he tells his uncle because you know Orlando Anderson is his nephew, and he's a, he's a Southside Crip, Compton Crip. He tells him, "Hey man, these guys beat my ass. They whooped my ass. I said, what? And these guys are hardcore street Crip members, right? These are killers. They, they, you can't do that. You, especially this this is a Compton war, right? That's gone to Las Vegas now. It, was, it started the MGM Grand, so it's going to get ugly. So according to this is own interviews he did himself. What transpires next? This is his own words that he did with you know we wrote a book about it, Vlad TV and others that you can look at. You know he talks about this his own words. He says they had the tools already because these guys come prepared. They had their white Cadillac and they were going to wait for him at the club that uh, Shook owns six six two. Well, if you look it up on the numbers, that means mob. Could be like mob Piru, right? That's what the club stands for. M O B, M O B. So. They have their own little code. Yeah. Allegedly, they're waiting there for an hour, but they're running late. These guys are running super late. Uh, Suge and uh, and uh, Tupac are running super late, and it was going to be a shootout at the club. These guys, that, that, that could have been a mass shooting. That, that could have been even worse what happened there. It's bad that one person died, and Suge almost died too, but it could be a lot of patrons could have been killed there too. These guys had lost their marbles, right? And these guys are armed, and it's about getting payback. And they're four deep in the car in their white Impala. So they get frustrated. This is according to Davis, what he says. They get frustrated. They go back around, <clears throat> and they want to see what's going on. And by chance, according to Davis, uh, the strip, if you've ever been in Las Vegas, it gets con- congested, a lot of cars, and a black BMW will, bl- will blend very easily, and it's nighttime, right? Because we're looking at like around, I think, 10, 10, 30. The exact time is in my book, what time this goes down. So by chance, but Tupac, he's outside, I guess, flaring his, his hands outside the vehicle. And they spot him because he was trying some girl's attention, right? Because everybody recognizes him. So they turn around, right? And they come up. Um, and according to uh, Davis, because he's on the driver's side, he's on the passenger side, and Orlando on the back seat, he passes a Glock 42. I'm, I'm sorry, a Glock 22 is a 40 caliber to him. And they pull up next to him, right? And opens up. Now, first he says they opened up. Later in his book, he says, that he wrote Compton uh, Street, uh, was it uh, Street, Street Legend? Uh, Street Legend of Compton. He later changed his story, but he says it's something different, a proffer later, uh, first. So his story is that that uh, that Tupac had a firearm. It was self defense, which is BS. A gun was never found. This is payback. They open up, and according to him, according to Davis, he thinks because he's watching Suge's face, he thought Suge had hit in the head. And he said, "Man, I, I used to also play Pop Warner football." Was Shug back in the day. All these guys know each other. So this Bloods Crips War, if you think about it, Adrian, this is the oldest civil war in U.S. history. Oldest civil war in U.S. history. It's been over 50 plus years. Bloods and Crips. These are guys who grew up together. These are brothers, family members, friends that take sides, right? And they take sides and they kill each other because they were friends growing up, right? They played football together. But hey, now you're with the Mob Pyrus. I'm with the, the, the Crips. Southside uh, Compton Crips, and it's on. And just like that, just like that, because this is my nephew. You disrespected us from you know at, at the lobby of the MGM Grand, and now we have to take care of business. Wasn't well, hey, let's do another fight? No, no, no. Now we go. Now he says, now the fireworks are on, right? His words. I remember. Now, now, now you turn on the fireworks, right? You know, in other words, shots were fired, and, and poor Tupac, he who was an entertainer, he got caught up in the moment. Uh, probably shouldn't have encouraged uh, Trevane Lane's actions, right? He should have said, hey, let's calm down. Let's work this out. Instead, they take it to another level. These guys take him to a higher level. And Tupac, I guess, shot, wrote my book, I think, four or five times. 
and he's done. Uh, Shook survives. Uh, he gets fragments in the back of his head. He didn't take a direct hit to the head. He took fragments back in his head. He's released from the hospital, I think, that, that may. So these guys, after the shots are fired, they leave. And, and according to uh, uh, Davis, uh, they just go back to the hotel and have a few. They didn't go back to Compton. They hang out, crash, right, have a few drinks <clears throat> and, and party and, and start talking about it. And, and, and the next day they leave. Un unbelievable, unbelievable what happens there. And, and unfortunately, Tupac will die, I believe, in my book, five or six days later, right, from his injuries. And he and he and he passes away. He was in really bad shape, right? He was in bad shape, very bad, bad shape. And uh, and eventually had to take him off the respirator. And the mother has to make a very tough decision. And they do. And uh, and he died. Very, very tragic ending. Very tragic ending for, for Tupac. But it, it takes, you know, 27 years later. How did we get 27 years? It takes so long for Davis to finally get arrested for everything. Well, that's a long journey. And it's, it's, gonna, it's an interesting story, what, what uh, I'm going to continue with here. But interesting character. So that's Tupac. He's a big name in the hip-hop world at the time, the 90s, right? Huge name, much, much followed. But there's that East Coast, West Coast rivalry going on b between uh, Sean Combs, P. Diddy now, right? Bad Boy Records and, and, Bad, and, uh, and Death Row Records, right? West Coast, East Coast thing going on there. <clears throat> and in a few years earlier, uh, Tupac was almost killed in 94 at quads at a studio, right? And uh, he was almost killed there. He survived the shooting then. And a lot of people think that P. Diddy and his, his associates were behind, him, allegedly. You know, that's what that was, that was speculative. You know, that there's anger, rivalry, you know, all that plays out, right? And um, he survives that one, right? He, in fact, he gets out of the hospital, I think the next day, gets a court hearing. And he has issues making bond and, and, and bailing out. And that's how Suge Knight gets involved, right? Suge Knight has this money, right? Well, where, where did he get his money from? Eventually, he bails him out. He, he signs a, a contract with Death Row Records. That's how he gets Tupac. But he where did he get that money from, right? Well, a lot of people speculate. And according to Vanilla Ice, it was from him. Years really earlier, old Vanilla Ice's money. He, sh he shook him down, extorted him, right? Because this guy, Suge Knight, like you said, he's a gangster type. And the way he operates, look, look, look what's happened <clears throat> to him now, right? He, he's looking at 30 years for killing a guy, running him over with his truck over a disagreement, how he was portrayed in a docuseries, right? Runs him yeah. over in common. If you haven't seen that picture in videos, he's in an orange truck. He clips one guy, have an argument, and he runs over the other guy. I, I remember seeing that, and like it was over a. Oh, no, he claimed that he was going blind, is what he had in his court case or something and that, that's what and, that was his defense and before he, his defense was he feared for his life too he thought these guys were going to shoot him and, and all that but but it says see when he backed out why didn't you just leave right why did you go why do you go run over him where he's at that's why he got 30 years <laughs> that's right yeah he got convicted that, then right he got convicted yeah, that's why he got 30 years because it doesn't make sense if you fear for your life then you go the opposite way okay go 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 the opposite way why are you going no you want to kill the guy because you're pissed at him because he portrayed you as a thug in his docuseries that you confront him with because they had breakfast and I guess got heated the conversation and they took it out to the parking lot. And it's, it's, it's fascinating. The life of Suge Knight. So that's how Suge is. All these guys end up going down. If you think about it, all these guys are going down. So you go back to, let's say, I think the story have um, vanilla ice became really big with ice, ice baby. And I remember I was in college, early nineties, right? 1990, 90, 91 in that era. And, uh, I believe this happened in that time period. I saw an interview he did with Vlad TV, and he pretty much uh, says that uh, these guys were waiting for him in his hotel room. He has his security guys, but Shug's, or maybe that you walk in and you have Suge Knight with his goon squad that's armed waiting for your room. I think what do you think's going to happen? I mean, what would you do, Ignacio? I, I'll, I'll, I'll make exit stage left, right? Oh, yeah. Get out of here. I'm not, I'm not sitting down. And going, what? I'll be like, what? Oh, time to get out of here. <laughs> no, that ain't gonna end good. We know that. And it did not end good for those guys. Not end good for these guys. So it's uh these guys are intimidating him. And according this is you know vanilla ice story. His what he says happens. So I, I'm I'm gonna repeat what he says because you know I don't see him why he would lie about it. The only thing I don't know if it did or didn't happen that when they meet in the, in the balcony, there were rumors that when he wouldn't want to sign his uh his uh publishing rights over to Suge Knight, that he allegedly him and his guys. We'll put him over the balcony until he did shake him over the balcony. Right. I don't know. If that, I, 
don't know if that happened or didn't happen. He says it didn't happen, but you don't know. But guess yeah. what? He did sign over. Uh, he didn't want to get his ass whooped. And he, one of his associates, they brought him in. I guess they found him chocolate. And uh, they brought him in. His face was swollen, cr eyes closed. They gave him a good beating. Damn, man. Straight up extortion just like that. Just using Straight. these gangster tactics, really, man. That's and what it would come it. down to. His, his con I guess in his interview, he said later his agent told him, okay, yeah, you give him the money, but guess what? You did right because you're alive. If you didn't sign it, you probably wouldn't be here. Or your yeah. face would be like like this. And remember, he's a performer too. I mean, do you want your face swollen up like this, no. and your eyes closed, your mouth and all that? No, man. He left that guy a mess. No. And I said, you know what? Here, here you go. <laughs> well, I'm going to say too, for anyone watching, if you got any questions for about this or any topics or ideas you want to throw at us, on, just go ahead and throw them on the live chat and we'll we'll get to them. Ignacio will just keep rolling with it. But there is a few here. Oh, yeah. Again, yeah. Let's, let's uh, hear them. What, what do you got? We'll what just stand like good morning. Or good, like, good morning. <laughs> Chris Martinez. Good yeah, morning. That's yes, my dad, actually. <laughs> he likes watching these live shows. But uh, JD here says, oh, uh, yeah. JD here says, good morning. Great video. I was in seventh grade when Tupac died. Still my favorite rapper of all time. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. a good rapper, man. That's for damn sure. And good rapper, he, actor, right? He, he, he was an artist, performer. But like I said, you, you get tied up with Ma Piru and Suge Knight. But he was almost killed, like I said, in, in 94 at Quads, you know, in that whole situation in New York City. So he was lucky to survive that. It, 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 the whole gangster lifestyle, rapper, a lot of these guys, you, you, they're from the street, and they don't play. And they, they have no value for life. Some of these guys are psychopaths, sociopaths, right? Life okay. to me means nothing, nothing at all. And obviously, Suge Knight's one of those guys. How else can you act like that, like a gangster? Believe me or not, I believe, and just what I read in one of the videos, I don't think there really was any animosity and hatred between uh, between uh, uh, Tupac and uh, uh, Biggie, Biggie Smalls. Because after he was shot at Quads, uh, he went to the hospital and was documented, and he visited him in the hospital and said, listen, man, I'm so sorry I heard what happened. I had nothing to do with that. And he talked to his father and everything else. So I, I don't think there was really bad blood between them. And I think he was kind of a mentor for Biggie also, Tupac, in yeah. early years. Right. And I think he pushed him in a direction of going to, with Sean Combs. Maybe things would have been different. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But guess what? Unfortunately, the same fate that happened to Tupac would happen to him a few months later. The same style of vehicle pulling up. I'm going to give you a little back, also a little context of this guy. So you took now March 97. Tupac was killed in September 96. The same thing will happen to his guy. It was an after-hour party. Uh, I want to say it was like around 2 in the morning. I have the time in my book, the exact time it happened. Uh, it's in Los Angeles, downtown area, right? Uh, both these guys are in uh, two uh, suburbans. Uh, but P. Diddy, at that time, Sean Combs, he's in the back suburban with his security team. And, uh, and uh, this guy, Biggie, he's in the front one. He's on the passenger side with a driver. And uh, I guess there's a light there. And this uh, black Impala pulls up. I guess it was, a, it was identified as a black male wearing, I think, a blue suit, blue bow tie. He had a blue 9mm uh, weapon, uh, firearm, and he fired rounds that eventually led to um, Biggie dying. Damn. So and that, and Oh, that's just insane, like how all that goes down. And yeah. do you think these two were connected or by any means? Well, you know, a lot of the guys that were involved in the murder of Tupac, at least or at least Orlando, uh, uh, not, I'm not sure about Orlando, but uh, uh, Kiffy D, he was at that party, that after our party also. Uh, that I think it was from Vibe. And uh, they were there, and a lot of these gangsters from L.A. were there. So, and I know there's some, you know, it's been said and speculated there was some bad blood and possibly that uh, – that uh, Suge was behind hiring somebody to kill him because that was his, you know, he lost his guy. And maybe the true target was supposed to be uh, P. Diddy, Sean Combs, right? And yeah. and, and at two black suburbans, they got the wrong car. I don't know. And, and here JD had a follow up. He said, <clears throat> Did Puff Daddy have Tupac killed or was it in relationship or uh, relation for be beating up Orlando Anderson? Was Orlando or Keefe D the shooter? That's what we're going to get into too. But go, yeah. yeah what do you think? It was, it was never solved. It was never really. It, it's still. I, I don't think so. Um, I think it was somebody else. It's been speculated. It, it was a hired hitman to do it, right? That's that's what it was, it was spe speculated. A professional job because uh, no one's ever been arrested, and, and it's been twenty seven years on that one also now. 
right? That's a long time. Really 27 long time. years. I don't know if that one ever, ever would be solved, to be honest with you, but it, this one was for one reason only, <clears throat> because uh, Dwayne Davis, he did, he did a proffer, right? I think it was in, two, that's in my book, in 2008, and I think it was a task force, federal task force uh, with locals to uh, find out, I think originally started to find out who killed um, uh, not who killed um, Tupac? Biggie. Yeah, oh, Biggie. To, okay. to kill Biggie. And then it led to more information about uh, Tupac and when Orlando, uh, when uh, Kiffy D talked about it, uh, Dwayne Davis, he, he he told the whole scenario I just told you that it was payback. He provided, he he orchestrated, provided the weapon to his nephew for what happened earlier at the MGM Grand. And that's what happened. But because it's a proffer, a federal proffer, FBI decided to go that route. They can't prosecute him, right? He's like king for the day. He's given immunity, right? He's protected. They can't use it against him. So that's why it took so long. But because he's been testifying, or at least he's been he's been talking to so many different people, that's on his own. And then they got a search warrant. I don't know if you remember a few, I think back in, um, I think it was in a few months earlier before they arrested him, they had a search warrant to his residence. So right. they got a lot of evidence there. And on top of that, he shamed him. He moved to Henderson, Nevada. From Compton, he ended up moving in the house there. So he's in their backyard. So they have to move. They have to do something. They shamed him to, to have to do something to arrest this guy, and that's what they did. And when they went and arrested him, did they find anything or that they made public or anything like that? Or I, I know during, during the uh, after day of the search warrant, they did find, I, I guess they had uh, some of his information of his computer, uh, you know, stuff that he, he talked about. And, and of course, the shows he's done is it, it's good information there. And he broke it down, everything that's happened. And then he wrote a book about it, right? And no gun was ever found on Tupac in a, in a black BMW or anything like that. He claimed it was self-defense. No, it wasn't because he said before what really happened and doing the proffer was this is payback, right? You disrespected us. We can't tell. We can't go back to Compton, you know, both these groups knowing what you did to one of our guys. So they have to handle it like that and, and teach them a lesson. And uh, at the end, that's what happened. So that's what he's looking at the time <clears throat> he's, uh, he's looking at. He's looking at life. The death penalty is off the table. But he, he is he is looking at life, and he, he is a guy. He's in his early sixties. He has health issues. Davis, uh, he he had colon cancer and some other stuff going on with him. Doesn't look good for him. Uh, I don't see him probably lasting more than 10, 15 years. But regardless, this is what you did. You had those years of freedom, which you should never have had, and now you're going to do your time and end your life this way. Orlando Anderson, I think, allegedly told him in one of the interviews, and he repeated it. Said, "Hey, man, don't talk about this with anybody." And Orlando, as you know, he died in a shootout uh, about two years after he killed um, uh, Tupac in a, in, a, in a shootout with another rival gangsters in Compton over a drug dispute. So the only person, the only two people who are left from the murder of Tupac is Davis and Suge Knight. And Suge said in a TMZ interview, I'm not going to testify in this case. And didn't want to do nothing to do with that at all. He would have been able to identify someone you would think if he he may have seen the shooter or you know yeah, of course he did who came up and did that real quick he, of course he of course he saw everything they, they he said they saw eye eye each other uh, allegedly before uh orlando uh anderson uh opened fire of course he saw what happened there he, he didn't want to say anything he, he's a gangster he doesn't want to be seen as a snitch right because it's street cred but guess what man you're you're, you're never going to come out again you have mm-hmm. health issues it's over for you um so I don't know. I, I don't trust him anyways, what he said and what, what he is. <laughs> what he's done to all these guys is, is pretty scary. Yeah, a lot of uh, common patterns in that in that yeah. regard. <laughs> you know. But and, and, and then and then you have the whole situation with uh Sean Combs, right? Yeah, you know, that's he, he's the target, that. he's going out there, and, and then look how things are playing out today, right? With with uh, HSI health uh uh doing uh, two search warrants. At a house in Miami and one in Los Angeles, right? He he settled a civil lawsuit for being involved in a sexual assault with uh, with minors at the time. More coming out, one after the other. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, Fifty Cent says, "Once you settle one, here they come." And that's that's what he said in his interview. Yeah, <laughs> and, and there's a whole issue with him, not only with women but with men, right? He's kind of he's bisexual. He's involved in many other things. He was grooming Usher. He groomed uh, Justin Bieber allegedly. He groomed others involved, and and then uh, he he was it uh, Ja Da or something like that. Ja Rule or what? Ja Rule, yeah. 
Ja Rule also, yeah, I was talking about that. I mean, there's so many out there that he used. He like, you know, this is what how they portrayed him. What they said that it's almost like a power control thing that he wants. And then he has some things about if he could be open and stuff like that. He he's done some, uh, you know, rap lyrics about that too. So I think it's the uh, the beginning of the end for P Diddy, no doubt. Well, the civil side, the criminal side is coming. All that's going to be in sponsorships. I can imagine endorsements are going down. They're not going to want anything to do with this guy. Uh, so this whole crew that's been involved, you know, Bad Boy Records, you know, you know the other guys. It's it's just uh, Death Row Records. It's uh, these guys all went down. When, what do you think about his son? What was his son's involvement? Like, what, what did they bust him for? Have you seen anything like that? Which one, P Diddy's? Yeah. No, I haven't seen anything with his son, but maybe it has something to do with what, what's going on with with his father. I don't know. With, yeah, because they arrested him that same day, I think. Yeah. And then he, he got like uh, charged and stuff. I, I don't I don't know. I didn't look a whole lot into it because there is a lot, but it's kind of uh, now all this shit that's coming down, like it, with the whole Keefy D and then this now, like just in the same span, really. In, if, and you look at the grand scheme of things, it's like they're pretty close to to each other to each other so maybe there may be some kind of involvement or whatever maybe the feds are just preparing a case or something oh, I, like I that. i think so yeah my, my experience has been and i've done quite a few of these uh, uh federal search warrants is uh, these are significant cases and not petty cases uh you go in there you have the prosecutor review it the affidavit you have the judge who signs it there's probable cause to go in there to find evidence of the allegations and, and, and knowing hsi uh homeland security uh, most likely looking for uh, uh, underage trafficking, right? Him, his involvement with girls under age 18, right? Boys maybe under age 18. Others, what's going on? Maybe he's involved in other things. So we'll, we'll see what kind of evidence comes out of it, the case they make. But it's going to be a significant case. And he, he's, he's a major music mogul. So this, this is a big thing for them. But he has issues. And I know he had issues with women, abusive relationships they were telling me about. So it's just a whole pattern where this is coming to an end for these guys. It came an end for Suge Knight, the way he what he did, came an end for this guy <clears throat> and for others involved. Uh, but Neil Ice seems like the one that he said, man, I'm alive. I'm doing good. I, You know, it's only money. I, I'm good. And, you know, he signed over. He signed it over. It's just unfortunate. Yeah, it's like, most people be like, man, that's your publishing rights. Those are millions of dollars. But these are gangsters or thugs. And when you have guys, he even said, I didn't tell this part, and, and he said he has security team and Shug's security team slapped him down, took his gun away from him, and made him cry. Damn, really? So when you see That's that, your, your security guy gets, gets slapped down, beat down by, by Shug's security team. You're in mm. trouble. <laughs> you, you know that things aren't going good. You're gonna have a bad night. So you said, you know what? I want to live another day. It's just money. I just have to dance some more and make some more concerts. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, JD here says, uh, I heard both of Puffy Puff Daddy's sons just got uh, detained during the search, but not arrested yet. Yeah. yeah so I heard the guy got detained, and, and he had too. He'll eventually get arrested. He'll, he'll present all the evidence to the grand jury, right? And the grand jury is going to review it all, and then uh, they'll make a decision if, if he's indicted, a true bill. Then they'll uh, <clears throat> they'll bring they'll bring him in, or he'll, he'll turn him over to the attorney, and they'll take it from there. But this is going to be a, a big thing. Definitely, I, I would agree because it's they're celebrities and stuff. There's going to be so much publicity around oh, this yes. whole thing, and of course, like the, the whole connection with Tupac, Biggie, and uh, Suge Knight, Death Row, Bad Boy, the old school, the whole East Coast West Coast beef, and just just the whole aspect of that there's going to be so much media on it there already is of course but it'll be interesting to see how this uh, the whole case plays out but you said that key D, his case was supposed to be this summer but now yeah. it got pushed back pushed to, to november to november okay. now so it's that's gonna be a huge trial too out of las vegas so that's that's a, that's a big trial people are gonna to want to know that that was uh <clears throat> one of the most uh fascinating unsolved murders right that and biggies with tupac and uh, especially one of these guys, a, a Southside Compton, Compton Crip, did it. And if you would have kept his mouth shut, kept quiet about it, they would never have had a case. It, it would nothing. He just have been the proffer. He has a proffer. They can't use it against him. They can't bring him in there. Yeah, he might not be able to testify because if he testifies differently from what he proffered to, then the proffer would come in against him. So mm -hmm. these are all interesting things, all factors that can play into this, uh, this case here. Uh, everything looks pretty strong. I mean, his his own words are going to do him in. 
and he's very, very detailed about what happened. Yeah, he is. I'm, I'm just There's, curious to see how much sugar is going to play a factor in this too. Yeah, and like I think um, with what you're saying too about with Keefe D, like it, it'll be interesting because he he did say different stuff on interviews like Vlad TV and his book and stuff uh, from compared to the proffer agreement. So what, what does that look like for him? Like just from your perspective on things and how cases play out with people yeah, doing this I, kind of thing. Yeah. I, I think with, with, with the proffer, <clears throat> he has to be truthful, right? Or they can use it against him. So that's the agreement with his attorney and with the prosecutor and he has to come clean and if he was clean, he was truthful, like you're supposed to be, then it was payback. And he gave the gun to uh, the Glock 22, it's a 40 caliber, and he gave it to Anderson because he's in the back seat and he's in the passenger sa side. He doesn't have a shot. The vehicle's side to side, right? And he goes over and he shoots uh, uh, Tupac and almost, you know, probably almost kills uh, Sugar also. There was this rap guy I interviewed for oh, he's from the West Coast and stuff way back when I first started the podcast. His name is Glasses Malone, and he wrote a book or not a book. He wrote he wrote a song, did a music video and everything maybe three three years ago before all this case went down, called Orlando Anderson, and mm -hmm. he in the song like he just shows he portrayed how the whole. Tupac got murdered and all this stuff. And I remember watching this. I'm like, how the hell did he get this information? But I'm sure that book might have been out. Or maybe he just heard the stuff from the grapevine because <clears throat> he was around that area. He's West Coast. He's a West Coast, West Coast sure. rapper and stuff right. like that. But it was just for me watching it back then. I was just like, damn, this is interesting. Maybe this is what happened. And here, here freaking that's last year. Like, that's that's what happened. A lot of people knew what happened. The yeah. local authorities, a lot of them knew what, what happened there. Uh, it, it's just uh, unfortunately uh, a lot of mistakes happen. Witnesses weren't talked to, cases weren't put together, and and um, that's it. Took this long for him just to continue. I think his ego. I mean, feeling that he he had something to do with this and how famous Tupac was, and and after the proffer, maybe he felt he was invincible. He said, "Oh, they can't use it against me." But what are you talking about now? And you're not in a proffer. You're not protect the setting. Well, it's fair game now. And uh, then you write a book about it. That you were there, you gave the gun. Oh, but you're calling it self-defense, but no gun was ever found there. Well, guess what? Now, and you moved to Henderson near Las Vegas. <laughs> you're not in Compton anymore. Well, no. you get in, they got a search warrant, and you know the rest is history. Well, and I think too, like with just so much how the gangsters and everything are so glamorized and stuff, and how the interview, you know, they do their interviews and everything. You know, me, I do all the interviews with all these guys and stuff, and I try to keep it on to the for, I, I try to only interview the guys that I feel really changed their life and stuff like yeah. that. Maybe before I didn't like I maybe or whatever I think, but I started feeling bad for that. But maybe that's what drew him to that. He wanted some kind of notoriety or some kind of, uh, yeah, like I you said, so. ego and just wanted to be like, yeah, that's what I was involved with. Uh, here's my book to sell kind of thing. And I don't know. Either way, it's history. It is. But yeah, he'll, he'll die incarcerated. It, it appears he'll, he'll die incarcerated, uh, but he had, a, he had a long life living. I mean, a lot of these gangsters don't live to 60, right? No. No and he, and he's, a, he's in the 60, and, and, and his, his nephew died two years after the incident. He was in a shootout. The other guy, Dre, he died You know, after that also. So in that car, he's the only one that's a, that's left, and the other one's also Suge, and he may not last. He has some health issues too. Let's yeah, see how, how much Suge lasts. I mean, I don't know if you saw him. He collapsed in the courtroom. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, he has a lot of stuff going on. He's looking at 30 years, close to 30 years uh, with his health and everything else going on. Uh, and well, now maybe P. Diddy is going to join him also. Well, I will say, yeah. And I will say, too, like <laughs> Snoop, I think Snoop Dogg, he ended up buying uh, Death Road Records. He's trying to do it his way now. He he has, you know, he, he made a song and he, you know, it's just basically a song about Suge Knight and. Oh yeah, he's just, he just talks about going and visiting him in prison and just thanking him for the things, the good things that he did. He says, "I admit that he did some bullshit, but he did a lot of good things for me and my career and all this." But he, you know, it's right. Like he did for some people, uh, he did, but like not the for others. That, the 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 way that he did it may not have been the right way, but like, I mean, Snoop Dogg may have not been what he was today if he wasn't going death row or Tupac. But look, that, look what happened to Tupac and a lot of the artists that were on that label and. 
Snoop Dogg, he ended up buying it. Either way, that's what I'm getting at. And now he's trying to do it his own way and start his own label with it. And that's good. I mean, he, he'd probably be, you know, doing his own ownership and the way that he wants to help young artists out and stuff. That's 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 a good thing. If you do it the right way, you don't do the gangster style way. You don't do it with violence. You're not involved in the drug trafficking. I know, I know he likes to smoke weed, but now in a lot of places, uh, recreational is legal and for medical uses, it, it's it's legal. Uh, but don't be a, you know, a drug trafficker. Don't be laundering money. Don't be involved uh-huh. in shootings. Don't be involved in, in, in all this other horrible things. That it's just it's a bad example. And, and mm-hmm. try to keep the, the lyrics positive because you hate when they when they talk bad, denigrate women, right? Or they do other things. You know, try try to keep it a, a positive message. Good music and positive message. I I think it's a good thing. When when it's anything but that type of rivalries and killing each other and and doing that, that's, that's no, no good. good. Right. That's, that, that's nothing at all. We got a couple more on here. Sean said, uh, set up on Tupac. Yeah, that, that may have would have happened that night. I think that's what he's talking about. Maybe he was, you know, the whole thing was set up by Suge. That's what they say. Like, there's so many different theories and stuff out there on, on that. And I just remember as a kid, <clears throat> like, you know, teenage kind of thing, just always following, yeah. like, these, you know, theories and stuff. Who who killed Tupac? And they say Suge was. But then Suge got shot. Like you yeah, said, great, man. That too. So, uh, I, and I, I believe, I believe uh, what Davis said, uh, Kiffy D, that uh, they were there for payback. And Anderson got his ass whooped, and they were going to accept that. A Southside Compton Crips, no way they were going to tolerate that. And, you know, after that, when they went back, there was like 10 days of feuding between the Bloods and the Crips and Compton. It was ugly, 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 ugly. So a lot of beefing going on there, a lot of feuding going on there. And then – you know, it still hasn't changed much in, in those areas. And like I said, it's still the, the longest civil war in U.S. history going on. Bloods and Crips, family members, friends growing up together. And they take sides and they, they have to, they, they kill each other. Hey, if they say you, you're you're gonna, you're strapped and this is your thing, and you're going to do it. Even yeah. if that was your buddy you played Pop Warner football with. Yeah, and then that's just where it goes, man. Uh, Eric here says, morning from Detroit. Good morning, right. Eric. Detroit, man. What's up? What's up? He said, uh, Keefe D told on himself, kept shells from the shooting. Oh, I mean, mm. you ever hear that, Ignacio? Is, is that what maybe they found in the evidence like that? Well, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, if, if, it's, if, it, if the gun is outside, right, popping around shells, maybe maybe one or two could have been there, but I, I don't know. I, I haven't heard that part, but maybe that did happen. If he did that, that's not too smart either. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, just Totally yourself. He's bragging himself. He he writes a book about. I mean, he made all the mistakes, and then he moves into the area. Okay, well, it's time to go. That's that's Kiffy D. He's uh, he lost his mind. He got old, and he, it, that's not really smart street creds, there, is it? No. That's not what, somebody. I, I was going to say too. In your book, you did talk about a little bit about Tupac's background and his family members and stuff were involved with Black Panthers and what other groups were they involved with? His family. Do you, do you recall, or was it mainly Black Panthers? I, I remember Black Panther could be other other groups are similar to the Black Panthers, right? And uh, you know, groups of the time that were involved in that very political groups. Uh, I know his, his mother when she was pregnant was looking at quite a bit of time in New York City for mm-hmm. uh, for a, a trial, but she was acquitted for yeah. for helping out family members. There, she was acquitted. I have more details about it in the book, but she she was acquitted. Uh, that would have been something. He was born in, in uh, incarceration, so. Um, yeah, that his whole family is interesting. They, they, his, his real name, I have it in my book, it wasn't Tupac Shakur. He, he, he was named after a, a Peruvian uh, Inca uh, uh, leader, right? Who was standing up to oppression from the Spaniards, right? And uh, he was killed. Uh, and uh, she named him after uh, Tupac because it's, it's okay to, it's pretty much saying it's, it's okay to name someone after someone who's been oppressed to stand up against oppression regardless of what country, not just in the United States, but around the world. So they were very political people, and that's probably the influence of the, of the Black Panther movement there, or other movements' involvement. But yeah, his, his background is interesting, and he went to school in Baltimore briefly, and that's why I think he was exposed to the arts and dancing and acting, and I gave him the bug, and that's why he, I think he ended up being a, a good performer, artist, and actor also. Uh, it's a tragic death with him, but when you get caught up with, with these cultures and these people, man, Nothing good comes out of it. And that's the whole thing, lesson learned in here with this gangs culture. Is a gang come first, your life is second, and they use and abuse you. Yeah, I mean, you 
I suppose you you understand you've been you've been on the other side of that, you know, busting the guys going undercover on different groups and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, I mean that's just kind of what 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 was really in conclusion, like of your book, like what what I got from it, it was mm-hmm. that's what brought Tupac and Biggie down was being involved with these Bloods and Crips was that that's what ultimately brought them to their demise, what got them killed, what cut their career short because they were involved with these guys. And like you said, Tupac wasn't full on gangster at the, no. you know, when he was coming up, he was just hanging out with like, you know, Suge and all them guys. No. And then Biggie, I don't know much about his background. Like if he was um, with the Crips or anything like that, not, but I know. When, really. Yeah. They, they, these guys, but you associate with these guys, that's the problem that happens. And we, these guys you associate with, especially if you help them do something like that, which he did. And especially when everybody's watching it there with the video at the NGM Grand, then it, it gets personal. And then these guys said, oh, yeah, that, then, then they took care of business. And these, it happened, it, I think if he would have stayed in the car and just been chilling, uh, they probably would have missed him. But because he's flaring his bodies outside the window, trying to get the girl's attention, that's when they see him. And that's why they, they pull up and, and he, he gets shot like four or five times. And it's it's over for him. After uh, a week later, he, he, he dies. And Suge got lucky, but you've been looking at Suge, man. He, even this guy, he doesn't learn his lesson. He, he's been in and out of probation, in trouble with the law, in and out, in and out, involved in situations, and and then he he kills that guy. He runs him over with his truck. I mean, that's that's brutal. It is. What you uh, seen the video? I know I have. It was pretty pretty brutal, man. I, I actually had a video of it and everything. Did mm-hmm. you? What drew you to want to write this this whole book or then about Tupac and you know the whole? Just Nine the whole thing. Day. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I said earlier, 27 years in the making. I said 20, and I knew a little about it. Of course, I was in customs then, and I knew about these guys. I wasn't a big fan, but yeah, I remember Tupac in the movies and, and, and his video and, and Suge Knight being a gangster. And I did work a year in Los Angeles, even though I was a Florida guy working in Tampa and Miami. I did do a year almost in LA working out there. And Suge Knight was a problem in 2003. He was a problem. There was a probation. He was involved in stuff, always having weapons. He's prohibited. He he, ha- he kept the thug life. He was involved with thugs and gangsters. And there was, and there was issues and you had other people and there was rumors that he was behind the killing of Biggie and all that stuff going on. So I said, I got to write about this. So I, I put my book together, They're short books, but I put them together in a series of books. And, and that way, if you really, you know, you want to get a good handling and then I have a lot of bibliography and a lot of sources they can go down that rabbit hole if that's what you want. And a lot of videos too. I mean, I'll, I'll sh- I show all the videos where you can start from A, B, C, and D, and you, you connect your dots yourself and you see how this played out. That's why I think the case is really good against Davis. And I think he, he him and Shug, and maybe I'm um, and keep an eye on this one, P. Diddy on uh, Sean Combs. That's going to be another interesting case here too. And I'm seeing more and more stuff in there. I didn't realize allegedly all this sexual assaults and attacks that he's been involved in and, and beatings and, and stuff like that. He's kind of a, like a Jekyll and Hyde. Damn. I mean, so deeply, deeply yeah. involved then. In. He, he's like a guy. He has a persona, right? And then, then he goes in the dark side. That's like awful. a mixed personality kind of thing. He, he's Double. rageous. Yeah. It's, it's awful, awful, awful. He has the odds and money, but all that's going to go away, it seems like. And he's going to lose it all. Lose it all because you just can't treat people that way. Not mm-hmm. in this country, at least. There's, there, there's accountability and there's consequences. And you keep on going long enough, it catches up to you. Look at Epstein, right? Mm-hmm. He no. went down like that too. A lot, lot, lot of sexual deviants go down. Yeah. Here, I'm going to go get something. Someone's at the door real quick. Sorry. If you sure, want to keep, just keep running with, uh, just talk about your book and a little bit of background. I'm, I'm, we're still live. I just, I, I don't know who's at there, man. I'll be right back. Sorry. All right, man. Good, good, good. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, apps, apps, uh, oh, you're good. Oh, no. I was just going to say, just keep talking, you know, just give the audience a little background on you. A little All bit right. more on your new projects. I'm going to go get this real quick. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can, you can right. find me on Amazon, right? Uh, my my baby autobiography, ATF Undercover. Uh, that's available there. And I have done almost uh, 80 books uh, you can find from uh, from uh, true crime to politics. I do also a weekly show with uh, William Steele on true crime. Uh, we also do current events, uh, politics. Uh, it's, it's, it's good. It's fascinating work. And I'm also working on screenplays. I try to make it into a TV series based on uh, my book ATF Undercover. I right now have one called Broken Crowns, and I'm working other uh, other projects. So uh, it's it's fun to watch. So uh, I look forward. I like doing the shows here with Adrian Martinez. <clears throat> I've been uh, 
doing them up for uh, almost two years, doing these shows, podcasts, and keep on working on it. I'm, I'm glad you guys are are watching here and enjoying the conversation we're having uh, on this topic here. <clears throat> Any questions out there? Let me see. Yeah, I don't see any right now. All right, Adrian. I was talking. I was talking about the books and everything else. Everything good? Oh yeah, the damn mail guy. He just I needed a signature on the package. You couldn't just leave it up there. Oh, uh, okay. No worries. No worries. I, I talked Sorry a little bit about, about the books, it. and if, if you guys can, also, also my books are on Audible too. If you, if you guys like audible books, ATF undercovers on Audible, and so with the most dangerous crime syndicates of our time. Uh, you know, dealing with the. Uh, uh, the Bloods, the Crips, the, dealing with uh, the Italian Mafia, the One Percenter Groups, Hells Angels, Outlaws, Mongols, uh, dealing with uh, the Cartel, Sinaloa, CJNG, um, I did talk about El Mencho, El Chapo. Uh, very good. It's almost an eight-hour listen, which is pretty good, and it gives you a good foundation of each one there and my analysis conclusion. So that's good. And, of course, my life, uh, ATF Undercover is good also. So, you know, I talk about the uh, not just war stories. The good, the bad, and the ugly of ATF. Uh, talk about waste, fraud, and abuse, and uh, my life as an agent, and give some solutions to some of the problems we have dealing with gun violence and mass shootings in in this country, which uh, I, I think is good. And I'm working on the screenplay and stuff, so I think it's good. Um, the books, um, like I said, they have short reads, medium reads, and long reads. I put them in a series also, and then I'm doing another one, which I hope to do soon to get out on Audible about tyrants and killers. That should be all, almost another eight-hour listen. Yeah, and see the audibles. I really love them too because you can just you know listen to them like music and just go about yes. your day, listen to them, and just keep running and go doing whatever you need to do, man. But you do got a lot of good projects. You've always been working so hard. Yeah, time, I'm, I'm I'm working. I had that Transmedia Group help promote me, and and uh, I'm I'm trying to work on uh, getting them things done, looking at the screenplays, and and hopefully I can make it into a TV series or, or other projects, documentaries, what have you. I'm looking to do more of that. I'm um, looking, if you're interested and you like what you hear, what I'm doing, my books, uh, please ask and you can contact me through Facebook uh, Messenger. You find me on Facebook or LinkedIn or Goodreads and you can reach out to me and I'll be more happy to do any any shows or what what have you. And uh, I'm always looking to do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I got your book in the video description of this one. But yeah, people can click that link and they can go to your profile and all that too to see all your other, your like your Amazon profile and all that too. But uh, I think... We just had like a few more comments in here. He said, uh, Orlando Anderson killed that dude. Yeah, he did. Then, yeah, he did. Thanks for tuning in, Lee. 
you too, Dean. Thanks for tuning in, man. I know he lives in a whole different country, Dean, here. And so it is pretty late where he's at, but I appreciate you tuning in, man. And just always staying in tune, Dean. Pretty cool, man. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, that kind of wraps up what we had today. I'll, uh, I, I mean, if you want to stake around in the background or you can head out, Ignacio, I was just going to, I was after the live shows, I just kind of talk and let the people know what's going on for the week okay. and kind of thing. But yeah. I mean, I do appreciate you coming on, Ignacio, and this oh, whole excellent. book is just excellent. awesome, man. I, I really did like it, and I've always been a fan of this whole Tupac. It just oh, been Biggie, all the music, of course, and then uh, you know, I, I think if those who are interested in this, keep on looking at the trail with uh, P Diddy. Keep on looking at that trail and where this is going, and, and the different connectors and people involved in, in the violence and the assaults and everything else. It's 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 interesting and then we'll see all these guys are going down and they went down or dead or it's a sad tragic life i think lessons learned is uh be careful who you're associated with help and what they can do to you because when you have them with thugs your life is going to end up that way and that's what happened to get these guys didn't play this guy it, it's shocking that uh that uh davis lasted so long as he did and it's true that's true man who knew that it would go on to be 20 plus years later until they finally that's finally were able to get him. That is. That, that's what got my attention. That's, that's what, what I'm I, like. <laughs> I had to write a book about this. This is interesting. <laughs> and the whole celebrity aspect and everything around it. I mean, cause yeah. they had big names and they were huge names. Huge. Huge, yeah. names. huge Everybody, names. Absolutely. Everybody does. knows them. <laughs> yeah. But all right, Ignacio, I'm going to keep rolling with this, but I do appreciate it, man. And all of right, guys, I'll, I'll hit good. you up on Facebook, man. Thank you, man. All right, guys. Yeah. Thank you guys. Bye. All right, everyone, that was Ignacio Esteban. That was a really good show. I enjoyed doing with him today. He really has uh, interesting stories. He's got plenty of stories that he's done in the past, and I, um, <clears throat> I I just like his whole, how he carries himself and how he's retired and he's still going hard and doing work every day with writing books, doing podcasts, all kinds of different stuff, and just trying to continue to grow his name and you know, just doing what he likes to do. Who knows? You never know what kind of passion you're going to fall into after you leave a career or anything. You know, maybe you get fired or something happens or, you know, you just never know. Nothing's guaranteed in this life, but you just kind of make the best of it and just keep rolling with whatever you want to do. And, you know, he's, this is his new passion now. He's, and so he's got a lot of cool stuff going on. And uh, if you haven't seen this week, I posted maybe Tuesday, I posted uh, Germano Tomasetti an interview with the Canadian mob associate. And then yesterday I posted one with a former gang member named Iron Nazario. So they're both great stories. We go into detail about their life and crime and how they were, how they, how they made money and how deeply involved they were with gang lives, mafia life kind of thing. And then eventually how they changed it around. So those two were great interviews. I did enjoy doing those. And then I think, Let's see. Then we did this live show with Ignacio, the whole Tupac murder deal. And then next Sunday, I do got Andrew coming back on. I know a lot of you guys liked him having him come on last, I believe, last Sunday. He's also going to come on with a 9-11 survivor. And I've had that 9-11 survivor. His name's Eric Ronigan. I had him on my show maybe, I don't know. Had to been getting close to a year or so ago. But he was a really good story. And his video that I did with him the interview and stuff when it first came out it got some attention and stuff but now like it, it just kept going and rolling and got picked up more so youtube is kind of strange with when, how they promote stuff or how they pick stuff up but it ended up getting a lot more views and so i was like you know what maybe i'll bring eric on i had a good good uh relationship with him i think he's cool and i think he'd come back on and so the whole mafia aspect on 9-11 will fit well you know it'd be, maybe the title would be called the mafia 9-11 or something but andrew di donato and that's what i'm talking about referring to is that his mom was working during both of those attacks on 9-11 on those uh, twin tower buildings so and he, <clears throat> i believe andrew was still in new york at that time too so he, he wasn't in the building but he gives the aspect of what the guys on the street were thinking and how uh just the whole culture and the whole ship mind chef, the, you know, the, the mindset when after that had happened and what had occurred and what 
guys were thinking and stuff like that. I don't know. I think it might make an interesting concept, but he wanted to come back on. And I, I thought I, I wanted him to come back on too. Cause I seen all you guys were commenting and reaching out and thought that the show that I did with him was pretty good. So we're going to mix it up together, I guess, suppose. Cause I had Eric already scheduled and then I was like, you know what, let me try to add Andrew into this one. And yeah, we made it work. They both said they wanted to do it. And so we'll have that next Sunday. And then <clears throat> this week coming out will be an interview with, uh, this guy that the one will his name one one will come out with the guy that was connected to the cocaine cowboys uh cuban mafia and then the italian mafia and then the other interview will be with uh, a guy that had gotten to an altercation one night at just a night out at the bar and ended up stabbing a couple people getting into a bar fight is what had happened and then and went, went to prison and stuff like that so and he got out and changed his life around. But so that that'll that's the plans for next week. And my the same thing with my channel. I'm gonna continue to go hard and drop a lot of shows for you guys. And I did appreciate those donations last week. Those are really cool. I, I got someone sent me a twenty dollar one on a cash app and I was gonna tell them thank you, but it didn't have like the name on it. It just said uh the name of their their username was yo yo mama. So I was like, Wow, I don't even know who to say thank you to, but <laughs> but whoever that is, thank you. I mean, if you, I don't know what, if your username on YouTube may be different or whatever, but I do appreciate that. That was really cool. That goes a long way. Just those little things. Oh, the, the one other thing I was going to bring up too. So comment what your thoughts are, <clears throat> whether you're catching the replay of this or the, the live show of this, let me know what your thoughts are on doing a membership thing where I, I'm going to have like offer bonus clips from each episode that I do from I do two podcast episodes every week and there's going to be bonus clips that I don't make that I don't I'm, I make exclusively for members for five bucks a month. And then, of course, there's other little benefits and stuff that go with it, too. But let me know, like if you would if you're interested in something like that and. I think I'd rather do it on YouTube because there you can do a YouTube uh, membership one or a P Patreon one. But I'm thinking YouTube might be the way to go because I did the whole Patreon thing and it's kind of hard to convert someone to a whole other app and stuff. But I think if you, YouTube's pretty simple and stuff. So I'm thinking of doing one on li like that. I do already got some bonus clips ready to go, but it's just a matter of actually going public with it and doing it like that. So yeah, just let me know your comments on that. If you that's something you guys would be interested in, it's just another thing that, you know, five bucks a month. It's not, I mean, the thing I was doing with, Sal was 10 bucks a month. This is just five bucks a month. I, I, I don't want to charge people so much, you know, just to, you know, I just want to be able to make it reasonable and stuff. So just let me know. And it's just a way you get this extra bonus clip. And then, it, of course, it helps support me as well coming out with all these shows and stuff. So I just want to continue to get closer to being able to live off this. And that's pretty much the end goal with this. So I can just continue to bring out more good videos for everyone. But Either way, I appreciate you guys watching and viewing and commenting and staying tuned every Sunday for live shows. But next live show, I think a lot of people will enjoy it with Eric and Andrew DiDonato, man. The Mafia and the Mafia and 9-11 is what I think just a short title will, will be what it's called. But both of those guys are going to be really cool. And yeah, I mean, we're all different age groups and stuff, but yeah, we'll have fun with it. And Eric's good. He wrote a whole book about his experience on that day. And then he also interviewed other people and he did. He got their experience on what they went through on that day. So he's got a lot to expand on. So it'll make for a good 90 minute show. So, yeah. Hey, good morning, man. How you doing? Thank you. Yeah, it is interesting, man. I think it'll make for an interesting clip or an interesting live show or whatnot. But. Yeah, and I think I like doing this whole thing at the end of the live shows as well, just chatting by myself, letting you guys know all the channel updates. And I want to get out some merch and stuff too, maybe two to three different logos, because I think it'd be good to make some high quality logos, just maybe a hoodie, t shirt, hat kind of thing. Nothing like a whole outfit or anything, but and just have some on hand just to give out to everyone and be able to do 
have some products to offer as well and just little things like that to continue to help grow the channel so any other questions or anything for me before i head out <clears throat> well, i'm glad you're doing good man i appreciate it i appreciate you tuning in but yeah i'll give it a minute or so see if you guys have any questions but Trying to think if there's anything else I needed to talk to you guys about. No. No, we'll just uh, keep rolling it out, all the good shows, and I'm going to try to put more community tab posts on there. I know you, everybody likes the polls and stuff. I just got to figure out some way to ask some uh, questions that go with the show and stuff like that. But thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see everyone next Sunday with Andrew and Eric, the Mafia and 9-11.